What are the treatment options for stage 4 prostate cancer? Is advanced prostate cancer a lethal disease? If you want to know more about advanced prostate cancer, stay tuned. Hello everyone, my name is Ruben. I'm a certified internist both in Canada and the US and currently I'm in my training to become an oncologist. In this video, I will talk to you about the treatments of advanced prostate cancer. Before going into different treatments of prostate cancer, let's talk about Physiology 101. In a normal human being, the prostate gland itself depends on the hormone testosterone. So the testosterone is produced by the testicles. And the testosterone helps the prostate gland to do its normal function, which is usually secreting fluids, which is part of the seminal fluid. But also what controls the testicles is the pituitary gland, which is a gland located here in your brain. And the pituitary gland sends signals toward the testicles to produce testosterone. But it's not only the testicles that produce the testosterone, there is also the adrenal gland, which is a gland located just above the kidneys. And it also produces testosterone and other hormones like androgens and the steroids. This is in a normal condition. So, in case of prostate cancer, we can control the cancer by decreasing the amount of testosterone produced by the testicles or stopping testosterone interaction with the prostate gland. What is a stage 4 prostate cancer? Stage 4 prostate cancer is an advanced stage of prostate cancer that left the prostate and traveled to other organs. So it traveled to the favorite organ of the prostate cancer, which is bones, liver, lungs. So it's a cancer that left the prostate and went to travel to other organs. What are the available treatment options of prostate cancer? We usually have three groups of indications. There are more, but we're gonna focus on three. So we have androgen depreciation therapy, and anti-androgen therapy and chemotherapy. So remember earlier I talked about the importance of testosterone for the prostate cancer? So the main treatment is to decrease the levels of testosterone in the body. We can do this in two ways. One, we can do a surgery, we remove the testicles, or we give medications that decreases the amount of testosterone in the body. So let's talk about the medications. We can give medications that can work directly on the pituitary gland, and stop the pituitary gland from sending signals toward the testicles. Hence, the testicles will stop producing testosterone. The other option is do a surgery and remove the testicles, and this is a procedure called orchiectomy. In the past, we used to do orchiectomies, but with the advancement of medicine, now we have medications and we tend more to using medications. That being said, some men prefer to do the surgery and do the orchiectomy especially if they don't want to bother taking a medication on a daily basis, or if they are very busy in their lifestyle, if they are traveling, and they don't have enough time to go and visit their healthcare provider or oncologist to do regular follow-ups. And then we have the anti-androgen medications. Anti-androgen medications are a group of medications that either suppress the production of testosterone. For example, a medication called abiraterone works on adrenal gland and the testicles, and stop them from producing testosterone. And there are other groups of medications that prevent the interaction between testosterone with the prostate gland, like enzalutamide and darolutamide. What are the side effects of androgen abbreviation therapy? Because this group of medication decreases the level of testosterone, it can lead to some side effects that can happen when you have low levels of testosterone, like hot flashes, the same hot flashes that women experience when they go through menopause, decreased libido and sex drive, uh, problems with the orgasm or erectile dysfunction, which is difficulty of having or maintaining an erection. It can also lead to thinning of the bones or what we call in medicine osteoporosis. It can theoretically also increase the risk of having heart attack it can also lead to higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. That being said, not all men develop those side effects. Some men might have the treatment and they are okay and they would never develop side effects. Some men might develop only hot flashes and other men might develop more severe side effects. 
The good news is those side effects can sometimes be managed with other medications. But that being said, I don't want to make you scared. I just want to make you aware and it's very important to talk to your healthcare providers to monitor your symptoms and monitor the side effects and choose the best treatment for you. When is the time to start the drink for prostate cancer? It really depends on your case and really depends on your healthcare provider preferences. Some physicians might start on treatment as early as possible. Others might say, let's wait and let's do watchful waiting, where your healthcare provider is going to see you on a regular basis and they're going to order some monitoring tests and imaging studies and they might delay treatment. And the philosophy behind this approach is, if the prostate cancer is a slow growing disease, in your case, we can monitor it and we can avoid the side effects that come with treatment. Let's talk about chemotherapy in prostate cancer. There are several types of chemotherapy used in prostate cancer. The most common chemotherapy used is called docetaxel. In the old days, physicians used to wait and didn't use chemotherapy in the early treatment of stage 4 prostate cancer. And the rationale was that chemotherapy comes with side effects and delaying its use also might benefit the patient. But Studies have been done and they showed that starting with chemotherapy early on with the androgen abbreviation therapy, it has a positive impact on the patient. The most common treatment used is called docetaxel and we give chemotherapy in cycles. What does that mean? We give chemotherapy for several days and then we give you some rest. That rest time it could be between one week to three weeks. For example, docetaxel is given in a cycle that is 21 days and then there are several days where you don't take docetaxel and we allow your body to rest. In case of prostate cancer, usually docetaxel is given in six cycles and the cycle is 21 days, so that's equal to 18 weeks. And then your oncologist will re-evaluate the need of using docetaxel. They might continue or might, they might stop the treatment. It truly really depends on the side effects that you develop. That being said, what are the side effects of docetaxel? It does have lots of side effects, but the most common are nausea and vomiting and diarrhea, thinning of the hair and the hair loss, and it can also affect your white blood cell count. So the white blood cell count might drop and it can predispose you to an infection. So your oncologist will follow up on you closely and monitor several parameters in your blood work to see if you develop any of those side effects. What about cancer vaccine? Is there a such thing in prostate cancer? And the answer is yes. It's not used widely. There are some ways of taking your white blood cell count outside of the body, showing them what prostate cancer looked like and injecting them back into your body and allowing them to fight the prostate cancer. This type of treatment is called cypoleucil T. Again, it's not that widely used. We talked about the treatment of prostate cancer, but what about treating metastasis? Prostate cancer really loves the bone, and the bone is one of the common organs that prostate cancer travel to. Fortunately, we do have some types of treatment to treat bone metastasis, okay? So one, we have radiation therapy, two, we have bone protective medications, three, we have radium-223. Radiation therapy is usually used when prostate cancer travels to the bone and causes pain, and there are also other indications, but we're not gonna go into the details, and this type of treatment helps relieve the pain and suppress the growth of prostate cancer in the bone. Then, we have the bone protective therapy. As I said earlier, when we use androgen deprivation therapy, this type of medication can predispose to bone thinning or osteoporosis. And prostate cancer itself can also affect the bones. So we have to give some medications that can help to sustain the bones and prevent fractures from happening. We do have a couple of medications like zoledronic acid and denosumab. These medications help to maintain the bone mass. 
And finally, we have the radium-223. It's a type of radiation therapy that goes and affects the prostate cancer cells that are in the bone and prevents prevent it from growing further. I hope you like this video and I'm happy to be part of your journey. If you have any questions about prostate cancer or, or any other type of cancer, please leave them in the comment below. Please hit the like and the subscribe button to stay notified about more videos I release in the future.